This time on Impavidus we look at anti-fouling. Copper coat, eroding anti-fouling and silicone. This is our friend David's Bavaria 37. It has eroding anti-fouling. It spent the last six months in the berth next to us here in our Marimar, in the Mediterranean. He left Port Solon about a month after us and came all the way down through the Bay of Biscay to Spain and the Mediterranean. So roughly the same time in the water as us. So this is Impavidus being lifted on the same day. We have copper coat. It's five years old and we've spent about 12 months in the water. The last six in the marina berth. We haven't moved at all other than round to the lift. Generally Impavidus just has a black slime all over. Although at the front we noticed there was some barnacle growth and we're looking into this. You really shouldn't have barnacle growth on copper coat. You can see our bow thruster is heavily encrusted with barnacles and sea worm. This marina is particularly bad for sea worm and barnacles as the water is so warm and still. This boat belongs to our friends Phil and Chris. Borala. She has Silic 1 silicone anti-fouling. It's new technology and seems to work amazingly well. The boat has roughly the same amount of time in the water and has travelled roughly the same amount of distance. She's been sitting in the marina for a while before she was lifted out. But just look how smooth the surface is after a light jet wash. Kind of feels rubbery and sticky to the touch, but even though it's got this mottled finish, it's incredibly slippy. And this boat, TZ, belongs to our good friends Dean and Linda. The copper coat is two years old, they've done roughly the same journey as us over the same period of time and the anti-fouling is much the same as ours, although Dean doesn't have the same problem with the front of his boat being covered in barnacles. If you're wondering about the name, TZ means thesis in French. This is a locals boat. They use it in the summer months, in the winter it gets left in and occasionally goes out, in the spring it's lifted and jetted off. You can see how bad the encrustation is in this eroding antifoul. So let's look at these antifouls in a bit more detail. How exactly do they work? Eroding antifoulings, also known as soft or ablative antifoulings, work by releasing biocide. However, this type of antifouling slowly erodes in water, eventually leaving little or no antifoul on your hull. If you wipe away the hull at any time, you'll see a small cloud of the product washing away. Overall, they offer a good or very good all-round performance in a wide range of fouling conditions. However, you do need different anti-foulings in different water temperatures and different conditions. Eroded anti-foulings are great for those who prefer a low maintenance option, as generally speaking there is far less accumulation of old paint on the hull after each season. However, a slow build-up can still occur if excessive paint is applied each application. This will eventually need to be removed as it may become unstable and lead to problems when new anti-fouling is applied. The typical weekend cruiser will need to use a very soft anti-fouling. Somebody who's out racing their boat five or six days a week will need to use a harder anti-fouling. That's the way it works. So let's look at copper coat. Copper coat is a two pack epoxy resin and 99% pure copper. Each litre of copper coat contains two kilograms of ultra fine copper powder. On immersion, seawater attacks the exposed pure copper, causing the formation of cuprous oxide, also known as copper oxide. This is a highly effective anti fouling agent that deters growth until the surface degrades further to become cupric hydrochloride. This final copper form is highly unstable and is washed away by the movement of the yacht. 
thereby removing any accumulating silt or slime. This automatically reveals a fresh copper rich surface whereby the process recommences. As copper coat is built up in layers of epoxy it also gives you other advantages, especially on new boats. This epoxy layer is not hydroscopic like fiberglass is and therefore your boat is protected from osmosis and attacked from the water. The preparation necessary to apply copper coat is fundamental to its longevity. Poor preparation gives you poor copper coat. We've seen boats with copper coat peeling off, falling off in lumps or not actually working where the application has been wrong and not been in accordance with copper coat's detailed instructions and their video which is also on YouTube. So let's look at silicone. The boat we looked at earlier, Borolar, has Silic 1, silicone based anti foul. So here's the blurb from Hempel. Silic 1 is a biocide free, high solid fouling release system based on silicone and hydrogel. This gives a smooth, even surface, making it difficult for organisms to attach to the hull and facilitates self cleaning when the boat is in motion. It's suitable for all substrates except wood. As part of our videos we thought we'd include some top tips, things we've picked up from other people or things that other people have shown us. This is Magnus and Tina's boat all the way from Sweden. Like many Bavarias it has non-slip moulded decks. A good pressure washing cleans them up well but the best way to get the fine black marks out of the moulding is to use Magnus's method. I guess any vinegar will do. Hang on. Wow just white vinegar yeah that's perfect so excellent much easier than polish or wax or something so just while you're here Magnus yeah. tell us a bit about Sofia Sofia is uh, Bavaria 42 from uh, 2007 yeah uh, we've had her since 2012 we bought her fixed her up, she was a little bit worn down uh, <laughs> in the surfaces and the finish, but uh, yeah, she's starting to get there, I think. Uh, uh, you, if I just look around the back, Magnus has done an awful lot of work on the boat, lots of additions, lots and lots of things too many to go through yeah um, and I, lo I love your varnish yeah that's hours and hours of varnish in Magnus yeah it is but then it's very easy to keep it clean yeah yeah and it's, it's not so bad it's, yeah. it takes a couple of days of course because you have to wait in between layers but yeah it's it's not so much work actually so how long you you lived aboard? We lived aboard for six years. Six years. This, mm. uh, this summer, yeah. And you've brought her all the way down from Gothenburg. Yeah, we did. We left uh, first of May last year. And uh, so similar stayed. route to us. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we crossed we crossed over, didn't yeah, we? A couple we of did. times. Yeah, we did. In in same yeah. same anchorages. Yeah. Brilliant. She's a beautiful boat, Magnus. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, we're happy with her. And you and you keep her so tidy, so spiffy, as yeah, Mads would yeah, say. Spiffy, <laughs> <laughs> pretty damn spiffy. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's my only hobby. So, and you, the la the latest addition is your um, is your tender. You've built. You've got a high field tender, and you've built chaps for it. You've put. Yeah. Tina made those. Yeah. Tina's Magnus's wife. She was project leader. Project leader. Yeah. And I did what I was told. Yeah, it's for for a beginner it turned out okay. And you've got your logo on the side as well. Yeah. Magnificent. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much, Magnus, for showing, giving the guys that that, that tip. Thank and uh, <laughs> we'll put it on to our on to our viewers so that uh, so that they can all benefit from the knowledge. Yep. Brilliant! Thanks very much. Thank you. So, a top tip for moulded decks is to pressure wash them and then scrub them off with white vinegar. Never pressure wash teak. 
you'll completely destroy the timber. Thanks Magnus and Tina, on Sophia. In mid-March we flew from Malaga Airport back to the UK for our daughter's wedding. As we took off we were able to see the coastline where we had sailed along a few months before. On the way back we flew over Pool Bay, Pool Harbour, St Albans Head and could even see as far down as Weymouth. Waters we'd been sailing, well, just a year ago. Pool Harbour looks completely different from the air, but you can see Old Harry Rocks, Goat Horn Point and Brown Sea Island, some of our favourite anchorages. So let's get back to the Antifell. Let's do best and cost. Impavidus cost us £3,200 to copper coat from new. If we'd done the work ourselves, it probably would have been about £2,000. We have the added benefit of five coats of epoxy. We did have some problems, but it seemed to be sorted now. Now we have to lift Impavidus every year to change the anodes, although technically we could do it underwater. So we're comparing oranges with oranges. Let's say the initial installation cost, if we'd done the work ourselves, Every year we've spent about £22 repairing little nicks and dinks in the copper coat and just touching it up where it needed to. So without the cost of any lifting, that averages out at about £220 a year, or roughly US$300 a year. That's not too bad. Now let's take a similar sized boat with the same preparation treatment. Five coats of epoxy and then an ablative anti-foul over the top. Five coats of epoxy is going to cost you about £2,000 and then there's £300 worth of antifoul. Times that for 10 years at £3,000 that gives you a total of £5,300 or £530 per annum, about US$700. Now that's more than double the cost over a 10 year period. Now we've deliberately left off the cost of lifting the boat as you'll probably have to lift your boat anyway to change the anodes and the cost of lifting your boat will depend on where you have it lifted. On a similar sized boat it will cost you about £500 in preparation work and special primers and then £2,000 worth of Silic 1. We couldn't find any information on the longevity of Silic 1 but let's assume it's 10 years. So over 10 years it's going to cost you about UK pounds per annum or roughly $340. There's a couple of things that you'll need to know about Silic 1. First, your boat needs to achieve 8 knots in order to self-clean, according to Hempel's data sheet. It's also quite soft and can easily be damaged, so you may have to repair patches every year. However, the performance that we've seen has been outstanding. It's a really good product. Apparently, SV Delos are using a similar product on their boat. be interesting to see how they get on. So we've given you the figures based on an 11.3 metre boat, or 37 feet roughly. As boats get bigger, the maths, or the numbers, get bigger too. So obviously, the advantages or disadvantages of each type of antifoul are exponential. So we hope this video has been as of use to you. Next time we'll be looking at propellers, antifoul in them, or not antifoul in them, and their different types. We make these videos for you. Please give us a thumbs up. Share, like and subscribe. Tell your friends about us.